Hi, good morning, and welcome to Missionary Grove. We're so glad to have you all here with us today. We have just a few quick announcements for you this week. On July 13th at 7 p.m., we will be hosting our Hope Center graduation. So please plan to join us and show your support. On July 17th, this will be the deadline for any ladies who plan to attend the Women of Joy Conference to turn in their $100 deposit. The Women of Joy Conference will be in October, and July 17th is also the deadline to turn in your $500 deposit for airplane tickets if you plan to be a part of this year's mission trip to Honduras in October. And also that evening on July 17th will be the Daughter of the King Women's Ministry Ladies Night at 5 p.m. Our guest speaker will be Olivia House, so ladies, Extend an invitation to your friends and family and plan to join us. And last but not least, coming up on July 31st, we will be hosting a back to school pool party at the City of Camden Pool. This will be for junior high and high school age students only. If you would like to have your child attend, then please go online to missionarygrove.com to sign them up. That's all the announcements we have for you this week. So now, if you would, please stand and join us for a time of worship. Good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. If this is your first time here, visitors, welcome. We're glad you came to be with us today. Let's all sing of the great things that God has done. Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet, for He has done great things. See what our Savior has done, and see how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore, you have done great things. Yes and amen, you will do great things, God, do do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dance in your freedom, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done. 
done great things. Oh, God, you do great things. Can you give him some praise this morning for the great things he's done in your life? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the great things. The one greatest thing he ever did for us was to go to that cross for us, right? Because every one of us deserved to be put on it. But he took it for us. He took that beating. He took that scourging. He took the sin of the world upon himself. And he took the shame. And he despised it so that we wouldn't have to go through it. And we thank him today for it, right? So let's worship him this morning in spirit and in truth. And um, just glorify him for what he has done for us and how he continually leads people to the cross. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's here where your blood was spilled for my ransom. And everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross. Your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord. I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Lead me to the cross. and tried human the word became flesh for my sin in death now you're risen and everything I once held dear I count it all as long Where your love poured out Bring me to my knees Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you Oh, lead me Lead me to the cross To your heart
Your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storm make way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life help me remember when I'm weak the fear may come but fear will leave You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Yes, I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life, all over my life, yes. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Oh, why should I fear for the evidence? the evidence is here. Oh, why should I fear? Oh, the evidence is here. Oh, why should I Amen. 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 You see uh, shirts and all the things in the world today that say no fear. And uh, it's really from a worldly perspective. You know, I'm not scared of anything or, you know, it's kind of a pride deal. But our no fear is faith. It's not, it's completely different than the world's. It's we don't fear because we know our Father's in full control. And he's working in our midst. So when we say no fear, it's completely different than the world. The world's trying to get strong and, ah, you know, I, no, I'm not, I don't fear anything, but uh, I fear God. <laughs> That's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And when you understand who he is, you can say, I don't fear tomorrow because I know who holds it. Amen. It's all in his hand. Father, thank you for a, a peace that lives within us, who is you, your, your spirit, the Holy Spirit, that gives us the ability not to fear 
uh, but to live in the fullness of you and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Allow us to see those things, and God, no matter what we're facing or what we're going through, allow us, Lord, just to know that you are in full control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aren't you thankful God's in control? Amen. 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 You can be seated. They're going to get the pulpit up here. Just enjoy each other's company for just a second as we get ready for the preached word of God. Amen. Psalm chapter 27. Praise God. I hope you are ready to get this week started off right. This is the first day of the week, and we're just going to continue to worship the Lord with His Word. I hope that you've done it, and you're coming into this place full of God's Spirit. But uh, if you're not, that's, that's fine, too. We will work on some of that today. Uh, Psalm 27. Verse number four, uh, we're going to talk about one verse today. And uh, it's kind of been the theme of our church for many years. And I want to make sure that uh, every now and then we continue down this path of the presence of God. Uh, Sometimes as a church evolves or gets bigger or moves along, you know, we've done a lot of that over the years. We went from 50 people to 100 to 150 and you know, now we average well over 400 people. We see people saved and build a building, and you kind of become that established church. Well, what happens when you become a, the established church is you tend to plateau, and then you tend to go backwards. You, you, you fall off. You, you go the opposite direction. Now, what got us to this place and what gets us to the places we need to be is the Spirit of God. I want you to always remember that. It's not... Phenomenal leaders, it's not anything like that. It's not people, we're not better than anybody else. We're not doing it better than anybody else. Even though sometimes in our pride we'd like to say, look at us. Uh, ultimately, when we think about things, we have to say, look look at God. Look at what God's done. Look at what the Holy Spirit's done, the presence of God's done. And what I don't want us to get into is we just come in here and we go through the motions and this is church, and we, we sing our three songs, and we hear our sermon, we feel good, we go back on Monday, and we're just back to the, the same old grind. And I want us to understand about the presence of God. In Psalm chapter 27, David understood the presence of God. He understood that he couldn't be the king God had called him to be without relying on the presence of God. He had everything in the world at his disposal. He had all the wealth and all the knowledge and all the men of God around him. He had all the things that a kingdom could provide. But there was one thing that David wanted more than anything on this earth. And I want us to always be fully focused and centered on what David speaks about in verse 4. The presence of God. This one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. Father, help us this morning to see how to live in Your presence, God. How to know You in ways, God, that we only hear written about. How people had relationships with you. They heard from you. They saw you move. They dwelled in your glory and how today that can happen for us also. God, in the midst of the ups and downs of life, let us see what David saw and let that be the first and the foremost desire of our own hearts. God, bless us now with your presence. God, they don't need me. They need you. My words are vain unless they come from you. And your word is the only thing living in this place right now. Sharper than any two-edged sword that can divide between the, the soul, the heart, the man, the spirit that we have, God. And show us what we need that we might be more like you. Do that now with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. David desired one thing. Now, that's a big statement. 
I have lots of desires. <laughs> My wife says sometimes, you have too many hobbies. You have too many things you want to do. And the reason she's saying that is because I spend too much money. Amen. You guys that ever get in trouble, you just got to, the next thing, the next thing. Desires. and The things of the world, the things that distract us. David had this part right. David had one desire. Verse 4. To live in the house of the Lord all of his life. Now, David wasn't talking about a physical house as much as he was talking about the presence of God. The presence of God. Though the house of God at the time David was in was a physical dwelling, David was talking about what was dwelling in the tent, in the physical dwelling. So we have to think about it the way David did. This is more of a spiritual move, a spiritual matter, than it is a physical matter. And in order to navigate the days ahead of us, we need to understand, number one, you have to have a singular focus. If you're going to be what God wants you to be in life, you have to have a singular focus. Number one, seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. All right. You're awake, but barely, okay? All right, here we go. In order to be what God wants you to be in life, you have to seek God first. Amen? Amen? First thing. Let's get it right, right off the bat. We've got all these other desires, but unless we seek the Lord first, everything else in life is futile, it's it's vain, it's useless, it's worthless. So we've got to see like David here, a singular focus. For the Christian, the singular focus has to be God in his presence. Now, I know you got saved, amen? How how many of you have been saved by the glorious grace of Jesus Christ, Amen? amen? You got it, okay, you got it, but what I'm talking about is the Practice of the presence of God. Anybody ever read that book by Brother Lawrence? Anybody? The practice of the presence of God? Surely one person in this room has read. Right now. Not right now. When this is over. Amazon. The practice of the presence of God. Get it. Because that's the key to living the Christian life. You got saved. You got the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, you are none of His. Once you got the Spirit of God... Then you practice the presence of God the rest of your life. Every day, all the time, singular focus, running. Now, look, I, I get it. You got all this stuff going on. You got all these people in your life. You got all this stuff. You got all these kids. You got all this work. You got, we're all the same. Amen? Think about David. David was the king of a big kingdom. David was the man in charge. David was the guy. He was this person who is saying in these, the one thing. Now, the thing this means is this, first, foremost, unified with God. If you're not seeking the things of God first, then there's division between you and God because God won't be in second place. You can be in second place. Your wife can be in second place. Your kids can be in second place. God won't be in second place. God's in first place or he's in no place. Amen? Because that's what he says, hot or cold, in or out, <laughs> all or nothing. That's, that's my God. And I'm glad he's like that because if he wasn't like that, we would just limp this thing along. Amen? I mean, we would. It's our nature to kind of hang out with him a little bit and go our own way and do our own thing. But God's not going to do that. We've got to understand that in the house of God was the presence of God. David was dealing with all this stuff, and he knew where he needed to be. He had a singular focus. In order to be unified with God, be united with God, you have to have this singular focus. Now, there's important things in life. I, I think sometimes people think about extremes and like, well, I've got all this stuff I've got to do. Absolutely, you do. you got responsibility. You, you, you can't just, just quit work and praise God all day. I get it. But you could start praising Him while you work. <laughs> you could do everything you do to the glory of God all the time and not compartmentalize your life and make this your job and this your family and this is when you go to church and this is when I do that. Maybe the presence of God being practiced all the time. David living in the middle of war, living in the middle of death, living in the middle of being this guy who had to make everything go in the right direction, but he understood some things. Psalm chapter 26, verse number 8 says, I love your sanctuary, Lord, because this 
this is the place where your glorious presence dwells. He wanted to be in the glory of God. All this other stuff. Man, it, it had to be great being the king, right? I mean, it had to be great having everything at your disposal. But it wasn't the house he loved. It was the holy presence of God in the house. It isn't the house. It's the presence of God in it. It isn't just going to church. It isn't just being saved. It isn't just hanging out with people you like. It's more than just, hey, I got it. I got my ticket out of hell. I've got my fire insurance. I'm, I'm headed that direction. Hey, I'm just going to do me until I see him. That's not what this is about. It's about every day focusing on the kingdom of God. It wasn't the sanctuary, but it was the spirit of God in it. It was the singular focus. No divided allegiance. Always pointing in the right direction. The practice of God's presence. Too many times we trade out lesser things for the presence of God. I mean, we really do. We substitute, but how many of you have always found that the substitute, the thing that we substitute the presence of God for always leaves us lacking? Always leaves us lacking. Everything else is the shallow end of the pool. Everything else is excitement for a moment. It's an emotional build. Everything else that we try to substitute the presence of God for leaves us wanting more. But God, listen to me. When you get in God's presence, because what was going on in the temple at this time? At At the tent where David saw the presence of God, the Levites were praising God. They were singing. There was music. There was sacrifice. There was programs. There was food. There was all this stuff. And David's like, all this stuff is... Side, I just want to be in the presence of God. I want to ask y'all a question. I'm not asking when's the last time you went to church, or when's the last time you listened to this, or done this, or fed somebody, or did a mission project. When's the last time you experienced the presence of God other than when you were saved? The tangible presence of God. Where you knew in that moment God's spirit was right where you were. I'm not talking about when you got saved. I'm talking about a moment where you were communing with God like a friend with a friend. And you knew the presence of God was in your midst. Because we can do this all day. We can sing and preach all day. But nothing matters if the presence of God doesn't show up. We can live our lives. We can go through the motions. And that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that at some point we become that church that just comes here. 8, 9, 30, and 11. 8, 9, 30, and 11. Wednesday nights, kids, all this stuff. It's all great. But it becomes a machine. And we're not going to listen to me. The machine is a machine of death. Because you get in this cycle of futility. Where your programs are just making things happen. That will pay the bill. But the presence of God is... Is not here. We don't need programs and people to pay bills. We need the presence of God to show up and show out in this place. It's a whole different category and a concept. We're not trying to build a machine. We're trying to be a place where the Messiah is welcome. That he might come in and revolutionize our lives like they've never been before. You have to have a singular focus, but you also have to have a seeking faith. This one thing I ask, this one thing I seek the most. Now, in this moment, the thing that was going on the most in the Levites area. So the Levites were a group in the tribe of Israel. They were born into this tribe. And this tribe was the Worshippers, the priests, that's all they did. They led worship in the temple. If you were born into the tribe of the Levites, that was your job. Your job was to minister to the presence of God all the time. So when David's saying, I want to dwell in the house of God, in the house of the Lord, he's saying, this is where I want to be, where these people are ministering to the presence of God all the time. What I'm going to tell you is this. Nobody's ever experienced the presence of God in a profound way if they weren't seeking for it. Y'all getting quiet on me. Listen to me. God doesn't shortcut his systems for anybody. 
And the problem is, if he showed up and started using you and working in your life in a profound way without you seeking his face, you would never seek him. Does that make sense? It's like your kid that's always in trouble, and when they turn 16, you still buy them a car. Well, why would they quit ever causing trouble when they know you're just going to give them what they want no matter what they do? God doesn't shortcut his systems. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. If you don't seek me, you will not find me. That's the antithesis of that statement. So what God's doing this morning is saying, hey, do you want more of me? Do you want to experience me? Do you want to be a part of what I'm doing? Then you have to come towards me. The father's always at the father's house waiting for sons and daughters to come home. If you want to dwell in God's presence, God's presence is in this place. Then you got to go. You got to seek. You got to strive. You got to beg. Literally beg. Please, God, please move in my life. You got to desire it more than anything. You got to crucify your flesh and you got to make Make requests towards God. you got to make this the request. I am, listen, I would rather die and go to heaven than not see heaven come to earth. I'd rather leave this place and not deal with any of this than not to have your presence. If you want to dwell in the presence of God, you got to have a seeking faith. And you got to start by asking him. This one thing I ask, when's the last time you asked God in a time where you and him were going back and forth? When's the last time you just said, God, overwhelm me with your presence? Do you believe that would happen? It can happen. You're overwhelmed anyways, right? Well, why wouldn't you say, God, I'm overwhelmed. I need you to overwhelm me. God, I, God I, I'm dealing with all this stuff. Well, God, I need you. I, I need your presence. God, I, I've been, And look, you've been in the presence before. You've been like uh, Moses. And there's been a... You, you've walked up and that burning bush was burning and... And it wasn't consumed and you saw the I am do something great in your life. You've, you've been to this place where the sea is parted. You've experienced the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know what it's like, but you're just, you're living in the dust now. You, you, you're living behind the times. You had the opportunity once in the presence of God to always go back up that mountain and get to where you But now you're looking back on a time where God moved in a great way. And you're saying, God, why can't you do it? He can and he will. You just got to ask. You just got to seek him. You just got to move towards him. The only reason the presence of God is not in your life is because you are not seeking him. That's why he sent Jesus to reconcile you into the Father, to make a way into the throne room of Christ, to make sure that you had perfect access through a perfect sacrifice. And now the only reason you're not dwelling in the throne room is because you've decided to stay where you're at. Because every day as a child of God, you can run into the throne room of God and get all you want from the one that has all that he has to offer. If you think about this for just a moment, you are requesting when you ask for his presence what he wants to give you. Don't you think he wants to be with you? I mean, I have four kids and none of them like me. They all come to me for the same thing, $20 bills and butt whoopings. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And we hand the second one out regularly. (laughs) But if one of them came to me and said, Daddy, I I just want to spend the day with you. I just want to spend some time with you. You know what I'd say first? Are you you feel okay? (laughs) Something wrong? What'd you do? Need some money? What is it? No. You know what I'd say? Sure. That, that, they're just asking what I want anyways. I just want to, be, I want to spend time with them. You don't think God wants that with you? He sent his son to a cross so you could enter his presence. And you're thinking, God, I just want to spend time with you. That's what he wants. That's why he put his son through what he did. Just to spend time with you. God is here. God is now. God is present. God's presence is present. 
And it's worship and prayer that gets us to this point. What do you think was going on in the, in the time where David was saying, I want to be in the house of the Lord, a group of priests that were continually worshiping. See, they actually lived. They had provision made for them. They lived in this temple. They lived in these tents. They lived around the prison. They lived all day long just to worship God. And David, being the king he was, and having the palaces and the big bedrooms and the nice stuff and the tables full of food, he said, I would give give it all up just to be a Levite. I would give this kingdom up and my kingship up just to leave this throne to go to the place where I could be in the presence of God at his throne all the time. See, we think everybody wants a stage or a platform or anything like that. But David was saying, I would leave the platform to go to a private place to be in his presence. Hear me. Everybody wants to be the preacher, except for the preacher. <laughs> Just being honest with you. But this, this is not where I'm fulfilled. This is not where I get what I need. This is, what I, this is where I pour out what God's already put in me in a place where I was seeking His presence. You see the difference? The difference is the quiet spot, the worship and prayer, not just the three songs that happened before this, but the time every day. And listen, we do it with, oh man, I was tired Monday morning and we start creating space between us and God. Man, I was tired Monday morning. I just didn't get up and spend any time with God. Well, do you think Tuesday is going to be any better? Because you're going to work Monday and so you're going to be even more tired Tuesday. I just had a rough day. Is it going to get any better without God? I'm just dealing with some things, and I, I just been. You think you think you're going to fix it on your own? I mean, look, listen to the. How many of you have ever made excuses like I'm talking about right now? I have. You know, it's just I. I just wasn't getting anything out of it. So, so God's so small in your mind when you read the Bible and you don't get nothing out of it. You don't think God's still working. That's how small your God is. Look, I've made all the excuses in the world, and I still make them. I still wake up on Monday after doing this all day and go, man, I just, I had enough of Jesus yesterday. I think I'll just take today off. Bad move, preacher. Bad move. Practice the presence of God all the time. That's what has got us to this point. It's what will carry us to the future, the, the finish line, to lay it all at Jesus' feet all the time and worship Him. Place your emphasis on prayer and the Word. That's where you will see the presence of God more than you've ever seen it in your life. In the quiet place, the public arena, the church worship service, is the place where the private worship and prayer manifest. The reason we don't have good church services is because we're not doing anything on the outside of them to get to a holy God. This should be the overflow of us pressing in day in and day out. This should just come in here and it should run like water. Shouldn't have to force nothing. Shouldn't ever need a cheerleader on the stage to say, Oh, let's worship God this morning. It should be a natural overflow of what's flowed in all week long. Ask the Lord, seek Him. Jeremiah told Israel, Look for me with your whole heart. Don't do things half heartedly. Any of you ever done anything half heartedly? All that you got, all that you are. We're staying on the spiritual side of things. I want to ask you a few questions. Are you where you want to be with God right now? I'm asking these. Listen. Are you fully full of the Spirit of God? If I say, can you, I got so much God in me, I can't get no more. Anybody in here? It's got so much in you, you can't get no more. Completely full. Well, by the, nobody's raising their hands, you know. No, no, no self-admission to that. And not me either. I would say that looking at this scripture and these verses. Am I always resting in his presence? Am I always living in the glory? I mean some days are better than others right? 
Some days it just clicks. Some days it just goes. Some days it's like pushing a, a ball up a hill that's going to roll over you and crush you. I do better. I've got some victory over some things, but there's some things I still fight in my flesh. I mean, I'm answering honestly. I've got to get focused. Primarily focused on God's presence through faith. And it has to start today. Here's where the devil gets us in moments like these. Well, preacher, that's good. But I think, you know, I'm going to just get through today. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to pray about it some more. And then tomorrow I'm going to run after God. Well, you're not going to do it. Preaching and church is call and response. The Holy Spirit calls and you respond. In that moment. Today is the day of salvation if you'll not harden your heart. You can be saved in an instant. Call. Well, I'm thinking about it. Quit thinking about it. Jesus gave his life. Give yours up. Don't endure hell. But have heaven for all eternity. Live a life that glorifies God. In an instant you can be saved. Well, preacher, I'm just going to think about it. Don't. Don't let the Holy Spirit lead you into Christ. If you need to be saved, it's today. But secondly, it's this. Well, I know I'm saved, preacher. And I know how this goes. And I've heard this before. And Stop. Today, you drive a stake in the ground. Today's a new day. Yesterday, I didn't do anything that I was supposed to do towards the presence of God. But today's a new day. And from this day forward, I'm going to practice the presence of God. I'm going to make a spiritual decision today that's going to change the rest of my life. Because here's what I'm telling you. You can be saved and not be, you can have the Spirit of God, but not be full of the Spirit of God. You can have the saving grace of God, but not have the fullness of His Spirit. There's a different world that some Christians live in. And that's what I'm seeing. From a distance, I see them saints of God that had the power of God upon them and on what they did. And I see that and I long for the day when I'm in God's presence like they were. And I long to lead a church that's the same way. Today, today's the day that we make a change. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you haven't lived in the presence of God like you want to, but you desire for that to change, I'm asking you today to take a step of faith. I'm asking you to stand up and come to this altar and ask God through the Holy Spirit to help you walk in His presence. Not just go to church. Not just sing the songs. Not just go through the motions. You'll get motion sick in a little while if you just keep going through these motions. And you know what that is? It's a little different than on a boat. Motion sickness in church is where you get sick of going through the motions and you just quit. Because there's no power in the motions. I just got to fake it till I make it. Quit. Quit. That is worldly and ungodly. We are new. We want change, life change, the Spirit of God to move. We cannot do this without Him. I don't want to do this without Him. I've experienced the fire of God. I want to walk with that flame every day, all the time. Will I mess up? Absolutely. Will I have to say I'm sorry? Absolutely. If I ask God to forgive me, will He? Absolutely. And God will continue to work in my life. He wants you in His presence. He made every way possible. Worship and prayer. All of life is worship and prayer. When, when you go to work tomorrow, you're working as unto the Lord. Your work tomorrow is worship. You do the best you can tomorrow. You, you do whatever your boss asks you to do. You do it with a smile on your face. You tell that coworker, that's worship. 
That's living in the presence of God. It's not a church service, but it's a servant's heart. It's not feelings, it's facts. Bible verses that say this can happen. It doesn't matter how you feel. Get out of them. Get out of your feelings. Run towards God. Run towards God. God will help you with those feelings. God will help you with your heart. God will help you with your head. I get in my head all the time. That's when I got to get out of it and get in my heart. <laughs> presence. Your presence, Lord. Ask Him. Ask Him. Ask Him for His presence. Ask Him for His Spirit. Ask Him to save you. Ask and you will receive. still praying you come if you need to step of faith this morning goes a long way Father, help us to be in your presence. Help us to be present, God. Help us to never get to the place where we wander away, Father. Help us to stay the course. Help us to stay focused. God, thank you for giving us your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit and how he has ministered to all of us from time to time. God, we don't want it to be here and there. We want it to be constant and consistent. And that's what you require of us. So thank you for that. Giving us the power to do it, Father. Through you and us, the hope of glory. And may we continue to seek you with all of our hearts. God, may we do this with all of our lives, God. And may everything be second place to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can have him if you want him. That's the beauty of our Lord. Just remember, got a lot going on today. If you want to hang out and watch some baptisms, we're fixing to roll that to the middle here and do some baptisms at 11. If you're going to hang out and watch that, if you don't mind, let the people coming in for the 11 sit and just y'all hang out and stand up around. If you haven't been baptized and you need to be, you know you've been saved, but you haven't been baptized, if you'll be up at this room about 1045, we've got shirts and shorts and towels if you need to be baptized. If you've been saved, but you haven't been baptized Let's make that happen this morning. Uh, offering boxes on the back walls when you leave. Uh, remember, we've got a lot going on in the next few weeks. Women's ministry. We've got children's stuff going on all the time. Youth. and Just be watching uh, our announcements. If you don't have our app, download our app. We'll get a bulletin on our app every Sunday. Then they roll some announcements on the screen. Just some things uh, that you might need to see throughout the week. Uh, if you're not on our social media, we're on about every social media platform. So check that out. That's how we give a lot of our updates. And you can be more aware of what's going on. Let's all stand and uh, go in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless our family this week. May we seek you with all of our hearts. May you give us a revelation of yourself through your spirit in such a way that we run hard after you all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in grace. Hope